ask you a question. We're recording. Uh, now guys, we're recording. if you have a question, I just want to say, if you have a question, if you do slash Q and then your question, it'll appear as a question and we will most likely, it will more likely be able to see it and, and answer it. So yep. um, Confluent Forms, if you want to do that, that would be awesome, but um, we can answer that question. Um, there was something I wanted to say verse to, to uh, oh, you said I didn't know like everyone else. Just, I'm not going to say any more than this. Just go look at Microsoft and LinkedIn's trading activity on Friday. I bet within the next six months we're going to hear there was insider trading and there will be people going to jail. I, I had a quick look at um, some of the trading of major shareholders. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of activity in February. Ooh. In February? Yeah. Uh, well, interesting. There was a lot of activity Friday. Yeah, I bet. Wow. Well, the talks really picked up when the LinkedIn stock dropped. When was that? When it went down 50% in one day? Oh, that, that was like, be. that was February, I think. That's mm -hmm. when Microsoft said, hey, we have an opportunity to move in now. Because they've been yeah. talking on and off for a while. Well, okay. I read an article, and I can go find it. I think I posted it in Slack earlier. I read an article that a year ago, Microsoft made an offer to Salesforce.com for $55 billion, and they wanted 73 and then the deal fell apart. Mm -hmm. so I think they're going to go back and do another play. But that could be a monopoly. Right. That may mm -hmm. not be allowed. Yeah, that yeah, that would be interesting to see in a, in in and of itself. Um, yeah, so Michael, why don't you talk about the uh, KPI piece that you published today? Because I just kind of ran through it really quick. It um, it's a it's a very interesting uh, it's a very interesting article. Can you post it in chat too? Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah do I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. Why don't you go ahead and talk? So about it? I was thinking because listening to all the, the calls and the questions from investors on Monday, they were talking, we're now going to be working on our KPIs or we've been working on our KPIs for this deal for what's going to be happening over the next six months. And I thought, right, we all need to hold them to account and come up with our own KPIs for what we want to see uh, with this deal because if we can have a groundswell of members saying this is what we want to see, then maybe they'll take notice. Well, you can hope, I suppose. And um, so I was just dreaming and thinking about what kind of KPIs would I want in terms of some of the things that I would expect them to do. So where is it? Number one, um, just briefly, is just the LinkedIn user interface, generally. I know it's on the cards to be changed this year, but I've kind of said time frame. I've put a time frame on it as well. By the end of July, they should be doing this. It has to move closer to the mobile experience, in my view. And we have seen little tasters coming through on, say, privacy and settings, groups. There's been some changes and, and help as well, support where you got this very larger text and the blue background. It looks very much like the app, feel like the app. Plus, in the slide deck, as part of the announcement, they had some screenshots on Windows tablets and I kind of whatever, Android phones or Google phones, where you saw like... Uh, pardon? <laughs> Probably not Google. No, yeah, no, no. That's why I said Microsoft phones. Um, yeah, right. Where you saw different designs of, of, you know, the user interface, your new, your home feed, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that was number one, user interface. Um, so do you want to talk about that first, or do you want me to just go through them all? No, let's talk about it. I like that's good. Yeah. So they have to stop hiding the good stuff. Like it's yeah. five layers to get to anything. Yep. Right. The other thing I think from user interfaces, they need, even though it was very intentional as sales navigator be a separate, separate product. It's so separate that it causes problems. So you have two separate inboxes. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's on two different platforms completely. So hopefully, um, you know, it's some at, and, I mean, because from from what I understand, LinkedIn.com is a separate platform. Um, their advanced uh, recruiter 
platform is a separate platform and then sales navigator is a separate platform i mean i mean i mean why a company would do that in general i don't know but that's the the way it is hopefully you know especially with some microsoft uh yes with some cash they will be able to um they have cash now yeah. <laughs> yes they will no, but it's, a, it's, a, they a, it's a revenue created you know experience so in the slide deck they very much as navigator as a separate product you could see yes. the screenshot of it mm -hmm. and i'm the only reason why you wouldn't want to combine it if you're going to monetize it with enterprise and have right. everybody because you, you're going to be able to monetize it so much quicker as part of office 365 you know it's, mm -hmm. a, it's another product to plug into yeah um i don't know i think i think there's two sides to it so i agree it should all be integrated number mm -hmm. one if you're paying that much a month i think they think you that you should feel like you're paying for a new product like, I think there's a, like, I'm buying a separate product. Mm -hmm. However, the best thing for premium upgrades are all those grayed out advanced filters and in, 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 filters in an advanced search. Yeah. So if every basic account had all of the grayed out sales navigator stuff. I'm going to guess they get a lot higher adoption. You go to click on that and it says, oh, you have to pay. You have to pay to see this. I mean, that's how everyone upgraded, right? Like, oh, look at that really cool feature. And right now, there's no, like, teaser. As a, from a business perspective, I think that's a big mistake because it doesn't mm -hmm. live inside of the same platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, what they want salespeople to do is live 100% inside of Navigator. Yes, they right? do. Yep. So yeah. here's, here's the big problem, and, and I think you'll all agree with me, is that... Navigator is missing so many features from the LinkedIn. You yeah, can only do six, five or six things inside of Navigator. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you can't mine someone's connections inside of Navigator. Right. I can't go in and see who Bob knows or who mm -hmm. Ted knows. Yeah. yeah. Right. I can't unless I do a second degree connection and a second degree search, but. I, I use that more than almost anything. If I'm meeting someone for coffee, that that's my go-to. Mm -hmm. You can't do company searches. Like, you can sort of. Like, you can see a list Accounts. of employees. Yeah. Well, but you can't, like, click through and drill down on the company search. Right, You don't yeah. get to the company page. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you can't drill down. To so for me, if I want to get into Campbell Soup and I want to find the VP of marketing inside of Campbell Soup, I go to the page. We all do this, right? We go to the page, we click on the employees, and we drill down. You can't do that inside of Navigator. So here's the problem. When you buy Navigator, I happen to have both, and I'm thrilled. But like Sally Jo upgraded to Navigator from Premium, and she lost all of her premium filters inside of LinkedIn.com. Yep. So she me. can't use those premium filters in a company search. Mm -hmm. huh. Yep, that's a problem. That's a big problem. I, I, actually, you can see all the employees for a company inside Navigator, but you can't I'll drill promise. down unless I'm wrong. Yeah, you can't. How do you mean drill down? So with all. Maybe I'm wrong, and I, I will be thrilled if, if I'm wrong because that would be a good thing. Or maybe it's so. So I looked at Campbell Soup. I just looked at Campbell Soup, and there's three thousand four hundred and fifty-seven employees. Okay. And at least this is in Navigator, and it allows me to look at my second level group members, third, all the different locations, all of the different criteria. So everything's there. Okay, Definitely. so can you, so I am lead recommendations, how you're connected, to, and I, I see that, it's saved. Um, where Underneath. if I want to look only for people in marketing? In Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, okay, I just where? did it, yeah. Where? Def so if you, what, so who are you looking at? All employees. That's it. So there's no place to there's okay there's keywords there's no place to put a title though oh look, yeah there it wrong is. Down. I am wrong that's fabulous I'm happy now good yeah good 
<laughs> Good, that's better. So, yeah, I mean, I think that overall, though, and this is something that um, that that both Beth Beth and I p- picked up on during during the investor call is that um, is that whenever they mentioned social selling, they very specifically said. Um, sales navigator every single time. So I'm thinking that as of now, at least it's their intention for all social sa- all social selling activity to go through sales navigator. At least that's what they want. So 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 are are you going to see more of those things that you can currently do in LinkedIn.com migrate over to sales navigator, which is something that we all had suspected. You know when. Even even when Brent and I were, were were talking with with LinkedIn specifically, I mean, I think that all of this is actually going to start um, rolling even even faster now now than it was before, basically. So, I'm curious to see how this plays with Microsoft Dynamics. Mm-hmm. So Microsoft, yeah. right? So so I if I were Microsoft, I would put a little play of upgrade the kind of integrate a little bit of dynamics inside of inside of LinkedIn. Yeah. So look, what, what do we miss? We miss tagging. Oh, that's I unless maybe you'll correct me. I guess I need to spend more time in Navigator, but notes, like you can't take notes on someone in Navigator. Am I accurate? No. Right. So you can't right. take notes, you can't tag. So if I'm searching and I and I come up with a prospect, I have to go to LinkedIn.com to see if I ever took notes on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, all of that is just totally that that has to be completely overhauled. Right. And I believe, well, I, I think that because they haven't done any of that, because there was this coming down the road, and everything has got to, you know, they've got to relook at everything afresh because they want LinkedIn to exist inside Microsoft 365. Right. That's very clear. Yep. LinkedIn, the image they created in that slide deck is LinkedIn is in the middle of it all and everything, everything and it connects to all of 365. In and out, yeah. So Dynamics, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint. How would it integrate the Word and PowerPoint? Uh, Word and PowerPoint, well, I think is actually, um, that may be more from a learning standpoint where where they'll try to upsell training in in that too because they had mentioned that too in terms of you know if you're in word and and, and you're having a problem somehow it will pop up you know would you like some training on that and then that's where um, LinkedIn's Linda acquisition comes in at that point to help people out whether that's free or whether you pay for that is obviously another story. But I think that when it comes to more of their like core type of software titles, I think that's, I think that that's where LinkedIn is 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 coming into it. Even though it's not a core, you know, a true LinkedIn functionality as we know it, basically. That's a little disconnect for me. I think that's really pushing it. I so uh, I saw something I think where going up in Outlook, like Reportive does inside of right. Gmail. Mm-hmm. Is awesome. Yeah, twenty percent of Linda. Twenty percent of Linda courses are related to Microsoft products. Right. Oh, interesting. So a huge opportunity mm-hmm. there. That, yeah. 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 A friend of mine that works at Microsoft, he's on the Dynamics team, and he's mm-hmm. really excited about this because we got this great database, and now we have all this data to pull into it and mm-hmm. integrate it with That's LinkedIn. That's it. The CRM cannot exist without data. Yeah. Yeah. And so overnight, you know, LinkedIn, well, Microsoft has just bought a massive database. That's what they yeah. bought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they can just use that information. The other thing as well, if you look at, again, going back to the slide deck, and they have an image somewhere that shows you a little pop up window inside Microsoft PowerPoint that if you want to do some learning at lynda.com, but you can also reach out to people who train in PowerPoint. And it even had a button for Pro Finder, mm-hmm. right? Which so people can a even... lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's you know they yes. kind of they've they whether it's a mock up or whether it's real, I don't know. But they've mocked something up that allows people to then click through. Let's say I'm in PowerPoint and I need a graphic, right, for my PowerPoint. So I could go to Pro Finder and find somebody who does graphic design. And provide me with a graphic yeah. um, 
I don't know. That that that's how I'm imagining mm -hmm. it. It would be really quick to be able to do yeah. that. Pro You're in the product. Finder, you want to reach out to some. Profinder is like so. It needs. I mean, it's in such infancy. It's like barely fertilized. It's out. Al alpha. I'm, I'm, it's it's like pre-alpha. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. so. One of the things with Profinder, I think I mentioned this the other day. I don't remember if it was on a blab, but one of the most frustrating things is, so I put in some bids. I had bids put, you know, I put it, I got a request and I put in some bids to declined, which was fine, but I couldn't even, like you have to put in an hourly rate or a project price. Right. You don't even know what the project is. Yeah. Like, like we're looking for some executive coaching and you can't enter without putting in a dollar amount. Yeah. Like, weird right so that's that's some of it and then so one person hired me to do a LinkedIn makeover awesome they can't say I hired her there is no button <laughs> right <laughs> I can request for ongoing marketing support and it's like what's ongoing marketing support how much <laughs> yeah like what is ongoing is marketing 40 support? hours a week yeah that's supposed to put a bid in there it's like that's a one thousand dollars a week, right, Ted? I put at one 10, time I put twenty dollars an hour just to see if I could get a response, and I didn't get a response because <laughs> oh, I tried putting in different rates mm -hmm. and fixed prices. Oh, so, and so, it's so crazy. Confluent Forms just put up uh, an RFP database, RFP DB. It's, right, a great it's, product, it's, it's, by the way, a great product. I love it. So I put it on Monday. And this is something they should probably look at buying mm -hmm. and and just putting yeah. into that profinder. Hey, Confluent Farms, do you want to be bought by Microsoft? There you go. This is, his name is David, <laughs> by the way. That's right. Yeah, Google. <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if Google will buy Salesforce.com. That that would be interesting. That I'm surprised they haven't. I don't know that it came up until this very moment. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 No, Google, but, if you're listening. You mean, that would be very quick. Let's buy some shares. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google apps for business. Yeah. That's a good point. And, um, which is uh, not doing as well as it should because I think Google apps for business is friggin' awesome. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 Microsoft still has a huge hold on the business world. Yeah. They don't yeah. market it. Yeah, they don't market it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, really, I think Google Apps is Microsoft's biggest competitor. It's not like Apple Pages. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. like, we're almost all Google Apps and Slack. Well, yep. I mean, absolutely. So. What's your next? Okay, we on? we we went off track a little bit. Bring us back, yeah, Michael. We, bring us back. Yeah. We, we were talking about user interface. Have we done that one to death? Yes. Next. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. The next, <laughs> the next one is Skype, right? Yes. And now, okay. So we can all add our Skype address on our contact inside uh, LinkedIn, which is great. And so here's my vision, because I, I talked about this about a year ago or so. I said, we, we need like, you know, that kind of video messaging inside living inside LinkedIn, connected to all your connections. So you could Skype them, message them directly, and then get a response back or whatever, and then go and have a call straight away if you wish to, right. you know, so it's instant. So anyway, and I'll just tell you this little story. So I was messing around in Skype. So I went, oh, let me go to Skype.com and just check my account. And I, can't, I couldn't remember my password. So it locked me out, right? Mm -hmm. Now, remember, this is a Microsoft product, right? Right. So it locked me out and said, you need to request for reset your password. Oh, OK, no problem. So then it, I got nowhere. All of a sudden, I find myself inside Microsoft account. And all of a sudden, I've set up a new Skype account, right? By accident, I was trying to retrieve my password. So I put my email in. And all of a sudden, say, right, you've now got a new account. I said, what? I was trying to get my password back. <laughs> anyway, listen to this. 
events, I went, oh, let me just go through the process and see where I get to. All of a sudden, it gives me a screen that says, import your contacts from Google or LinkedIn mm. or Yahoo, right? Mm -hmm. So it gave me the option to connect to my LinkedIn account to import all my contacts into Skype. And guess what happened? It has the Nothing. API. It didn't work. Of course not. <laughs> well, they did have the API to do that. Yeah, it's got the API to do that, and it gave me the grant access to your LinkedIn account. And then I got the dreaded error message, the Microsoft error message. There seems to be a problem connecting the service to your Microsoft account at the moment. Imagine that. Please try again later. You'll fix it. They have the own the API now. <laughs> Well, they don't know. Well, they don't own anything yet. I mean, let's be clear That's about true. that. I mean, nothing. I mean, you know, though. yeah, yeah. I mean, so I mean, all this stuff that we're talking about is great, but none of this true integration is is even going to start happening until after the uh, deal closes, which is by what end is of the that? year. You know? um, they are saying by uh, by calendar year end, they they expect this to close. So, um, you know, now obviously is is LinkedIn going to be, you know, probably doing a lot of prep work behind the scenes to, to make sure that once this does happen, that things start rolling out. Yeah. But, um, you know, and hopefully they will look at Michael's story and they will start implementing things uh, according to Michael's schedule, basically, because because uh, <laughs> I think it's actually a really good schedule. I, I really so do. Okay, so then jump to Skype for business, right? Yeah. I don't know. Have, have you I guys have, ever I have used not Skype seen for business? Skype for business. I have, I have okay, no it used to be called is. Link. Yeah. It used to be called yeah. Link, L Y N C. Okay. Right? And it, I was using it because I was uh, educating some students uh, in the country via Skype for business. Okay. And they, they only had Microsoft products, so I had to use Skype. But it was called Link at the time. And then Halfway through me teaching them, it all changed. The whole user interface changed and everything. Anyway, it's totally different to Skype. It just doesn't look the same product, you know. And it's basically doing webinars. It's the same as, let's say, GoToMeeting or it's a little bit Functionality is GoToMeeting? It's a bit simpler. I would say it's easier to use than, say, GoToWebinar. Because GoToWebinar, there are a lot of buttons and wow. things you've got to do. Yeah. So I think it's easier, and the quality was very, very good. Very good. I was very pleased with it, and the recording of it worked really well. So all of that side, I was impressed with. But it's a long overdue feature that LinkedIn should have had years ago to allow us to do you know, an instant webinar with a group of people inside LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, it just makes total sense to be able to do that. So I'm super excited about that. Good. So that what views great inside of groups? Yeah. So what what views on Skype? Well, I I was a participant on Skype for Business, HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise uses Skype for Business. Um I did not realize it had all that functionality. It didn't feel like Skype, but it did not feel as robust, but maybe that's part of the beauty. Um, as um, like a, a go-to meeting. Right. Um, yeah. And I was actually thrown when HPE sent us a Skype link. Like it was strange. Like I, I didn't, it was the first time I realized that there was a Skype for business. It wasn't that long ago, so uh, shame on me. Um, but I had a good experience with it. But it definitely is, feels much simpler than a go-to webinar. I have Office 365, and I cannot find Skype for business within there. I'm supposed to have access. Sure, yeah. Well, that's interesting. I know. It's maybe because I have an old account that I'm only paying like $6 a month for. Wow, interesting. that's pretty cool. So my old business, we had, I'm sure they still do, I'm 365. Um, and then when I launched the sales link, I decided to go the Google route. I, found Google, I find Google to be much simpler than Office 365. For collaboration, like I could not really figure out collaboration on Office 365, but that was five years ago. Yeah. 
okay your your the kind of network seems to be could be my side but is is everybody still okay um, Can you hear me? i don't see bob bob is security bio only Yeah, you've all gone. You're all talking like robots uh, a little bit. Okay. So I can't hear Bob well, but I can hear Michael well. Yeah, I can hear Michael fine. Yeah, it, I can hear Brent fine. Says poor internet signal, so it must be a US line. Of course. <laughs> I can't hear you now. I can't hear you now, Brent. Yeah, she's going away. Um, yeah, she's frozen. Yeah, I'm gonna. She's gone. There she goes. Is that better? You're frozen too, Ted. I am. <laughs> Bryn's back. Oh, you're you're coming back now, Ted. Uh, <laughs> I must be connected Bryn, to say Bryn something. through Bob. <laughs> say something. Some... Is Bob back? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay, you're all back again. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Ted, have you got business essentials on 365? Because that's where you can get Skype for business. Uh, I'll have to check and see what level I'm at. Yeah, so I think if you've got like a personal 365, you probably won't get it. it needs to be a business account. Okay, so, this, that's, so that was Skype. Yeah. And... I think we don't need to say much about this. I added the kind of whole inviting and accepting invites kind of workflow because that whole thing is so totally broken all over the place. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. And I'm hoping that when they've got some Microsoft engineers, okay, don't laugh, <laughs> they, that some fresh eyes maybe looking at it might go, hold on a minute, you guys, this is broken. You know, you need to do something different here. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I'm, I'm wishing this might happen. So I yeah. do think the one, I mean, I agree that it's, it, there's so many beyond like crazy things, but I think three things need to change when it comes to connections other than the ease of getting there. So mm. they, they did one step towards this. Now you can see the, the speech bubble if it's a custom message or just an arrow if it was a generic message. So does everybody have that interface? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not getting many. I'm not getting many. I've only got one speech bubble. Okay. On I had mind. a lot of speech bubbles from last night because I was at a networking event and met people. And I got like six or seven today. That was nice to meet you. So the speech bubble is working. So in that regard, I think that's great. One of the biggest mistakes they make is when you accept a connection, they do not prompt you to send that person a welcome message. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I've been communicating with Rachel Kumar because mm -hmm. she keeps sending me questions. She's definitely looking at this. And she said, can you share with me some of the responses that you send to your connections after you've accepted? So I sent her a PDF with some of the things that I do. So she said they're looking at that to to help people, inspire people to do it, to give them some prompt to do it. So who knows? It's something that they're working on at the moment. And the next thing I think that they really need to do better um, is make it very clear when someone has accepted your connection request. So you mm. can go, you have to hunt and go down into connections, but you'll see all new connections, but they're mixed with the people you've accepted and the people that have accepted you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. if you sent a welcome message to someone there's and they're in that list, it's, it's just so much work to figure out, right? So I have a folder in Gmail that all my LinkedIn invitation acceptances go and so work yeah. through that. But LinkedIn should make it really simple. It should be in your inbox that says, George accepted your connection. And then you can now with whatever, you know, and now you can reply. They've got to make it really simple and encourage us to start conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, my system right now is like I click on all the open invitations. When I accept a, a conversation, a, a sec, accept an invitation, the little green bar that says, George is now your connection. I have to right click, open that in a new link. And then if I send message, it pops up. 
I want to see the stream of messages to see if there was any conversation before. Right. Absolutely. So now I, have to I mean, it, copy yeah. the name, and I have to go into the inbox and paste the name to see if anything comes up. Yeah. No, and I've I've done this. I've gone. I want to message in messaging. I've even put their name in to search on them to see did I already communicate something? Mm -hmm. And I went, no, I didn't. So I then copy and pasted my my template message, and I already sent one. And then it, it comes up, and you can, and it, it comes up with the other one above it. Yeah, I know, I know exactly right. I mean, it's so broken. The whole thing, even for us who know what we're doing, yeah, it's failing yep. all over the place. Well, I when the, all the time. that pop up message should never happen again. When you hit send message, it should take you to the inbox. Yeah. 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 I mean. Yeah. Bob, you're off off camera. Did you know that? No, I oh, see Bob. I see him. Oh, OK. That's me then. OK. So I made the mistake of adding social sales GPS to my experience last week. And I, I turned, turned, forgot to turn off the notifications. So did Viv. I have over a thousand messages in my inbox now. <laughs> I knew you would, and I've sent you one too. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't see any other messages because they keep they're still oh, coming. Yeah, 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 that is a disadvantage of that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and guess what? Everybody's saying, "Congrats!" Congrats. The, the can Hope message. You're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yep. oh God, could anybody be more original, please? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's you know, amazing. I have, oh my gosh, my battery's low. I might have to go get. I try, so if you, I'm going to put in every time someone has a birthday. Oops, no, it didn't work. It's not working. HBTY. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, but wait, wait, wait. That's your short oh, yeah, oh, that's a it's shortcut. It's showing in my thing, but it's not like showing. Wait, I have to go. Like, I see it, but it's not. Here we go. Will that do it? Yeah. So that's what I send, and I fill in the XXX to all the birthday people. And many more. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Right. So I it's a little it. like, it's a shortcut. I put their name in. Oh, you better believe I'm copying and pasting that right now. Isn't that fun? I yeah. added a yeah, line great. where you just say, did you do anything fun for your birthday? And about 40% of the people reply and said, no, I just went out to dinner or I had to work. They actually reply and it starts a conversation. It's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's probably better than what I do. But people will go, that's so cool. Thank you. Like, it's a little different. Yeah. It stands mm -hmm. out. Yeah. But HBTY is my shortcut. That's why I hope. But it, I was showing it. It wasn't showing up. But anyway. Okay. Cool. Love it. Love it. Cool. Very good. Very good. So continue uh, on with your list, Michael. Okay. So uh, thanks, Bob. We're really the, focused the today. <laughs> I know. It's I know. I, I know. Do. It's like it, it, it's like we're all like shiny, Brent, shiny, we love shiny. having you on. <laughs> we love having you on, Brim, because there's always been these three guys every yeah. week. Yeah. No, this is fantastic. Get Viv on. Oh my God, she's so much fun in a blab. <laughs> yeah, she is. I've seen her in blabs before. She's fantastic. She's fantastic. Who? Viv. Vivica. Is she no, here? No, 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 no. Oh, we're just saying okay. in general. One of these days, I know, I know. One of these Wednesdays, the uh, stars and planets will align and we'll, and we'll be able to have her on. One of these, yeah, yeah sure. Okay, so the, the, the number five, I think we talked about already, but Microsoft Dynamics CRM, okay? So we, we already know that LinkedIn tried at some level to be a bit like CRM, but really... Yeah. They totally messed it up. And it could have been, they could have done something on their own, but they never really got it together. Right. So Now they don't have to. Um, no, now they don't have to. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I believe that every LinkedIn premium member needs to be given a dynamic CRM account, kind of as part of that package, integrated probably with, I don't know, probably it's going to be integrated with Sales Navigator, right? Probably. And so... It all needs to be joined up so that when we're doing all of the things that we're doing in Navigator, it will just populate the actions in the CRM and the, you know, the follow up and everything else that happens as a result of right. it. So there needs to be like a pop up window or something to click through all the other way around. Um, I would prefer it inside LinkedIn, but I doubt it. It's probably going to be living inside Dynamics 
rather than the other way around. But well, you know, even it's so, interesting because dynamics is set up for teams. It's not set up for individuals, right? And I think there is for small business. Small business, right? It, and one yeah. of part of having a CRM is knowing, like, I put in a lead. And I'm like, oh, look. Peter's working that I can move up. Like I, ha you have that insight internally, mm -hmm. but I would say a significant number of entrepreneurs do not have good CRMs. I mean, some of them have like nimble, which is fabulous. And there are certain ones that are meant for entrepreneurs and smaller companies that are really excellent. Uh, but mm -hmm. if I were dynamics, I would not make it a separate tool. I would totally integrate and brand uh, the one person CRM inside of LinkedIn. I agree. Yeah. I, I would do the same. Yeah, I think one of the problems with any CRM, and we see this with our clients all the time, and I'm sure you, you know, um, you guys run into this. Is you know, we'll talk to a client about Salesforce.com, and they're like, "We have really bad adoption." Like right. the only time they put anything in there is yeah. if it's going to affect their commission. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, I've, so it's always been the same problem. With any because, CRM. And that's any CRM. Yeah, the, and any sales The team. sales manager, the sales manager or director needs every salesperson to put stuff in because they need to be able to report on it and do all of the analytics and stuff like that. They need to know what's going on. The trouble is everybody makes it a once a week job rather than doing this on the you know, on the fly. Right. And I've had issues managing sales teams to try and get them to do stuff in the moment rather than doing it once a week or once a month oh. even. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. So, mobile helps. Yeah. It, yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. I was just going to say that mobile does help. And maybe it, maybe there will be a better mobile I integration and, you know, just. Totally. And, and then, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, I don't know what I was going to say. So, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, but but just oh, I know I was gonna say so so like with um, with the People Links product, we have what's what are called these advanced cards that 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 with that throughout the um, funnel process, um, we give suggestions and recommendations on how to essentially move deals faster through the funnel. But all of that depends on the the salespeople entering in and keeping their sales force up to date. If they don't do that, the recommendations that the PeopleLinks platform gives are not going to be as good. And it's not PeopleLinks' fault. It's it's salesperson's well, fault. Well, so, because... so we Go have ahead. a way around that, Bob. Oh, we do now. I want to hear yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, we can actually, yeah, no, it's awesome. We can actually create recommendations based on no activity in certain amount of days. Right. So oh, that's good. Happens, I like that. Right. So if nothing happens, we put in a they put in a lead, and there's no additional record or mm -hmm. action inside of the CRM. Yeah. In seven days or five days or whatever we want it to be, a recommendation will go out that in their email where they can click through that. It takes them back into that record of that prospect to. That's complete. good. That's nice. good to know. That's very so nice. No activity will trigger opportunities hmm. so I, like I am I had so much fun unfortunately I have to run because I and I have if you guys want to come I have a, a webinar in an hour and 15 minutes um, maybe I'll put the link in before I head out yeah do that um, so what's the webinar on eight stage no that was last week that Hold was last on. week that was a very good webinar by the way I really enjoyed that oh yeah five LinkedIn KPI enterprise sales leaders should track. So I've got to go figure out what those five are right now. <laughs> that sounds like me with the training that I was, uh, that I got put oh, off on today, that. but that's funny. <laughs> so I'm going to go work on that. Have fun. You guys, there. you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks. You, you too. too. So Thank you, Brian. This is like the highlight. Love you. Yeah, same here. <laughs> same here. Absolutely. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Um, so we have a seat open. If you want to jump in uh, via video or if you just want to participate via audio, that's great. Just click on the seat and we will let you in. Um, 
boy, we just kind of got rolling right away, didn't we? We we never introduced ourselves or anything. I mean, that's how hot this week has been in terms of uh, uh, in terms of LinkedIn and and social selling. And I think that half the times we should actually call this uh, call this blab session LinkedIn Geek Chat instead of Social Selling Wednesday because that, that that's what it, it it kind of turns into a little bit. But um, but LinkedIn, you know, again, is such an important part of, of social selling. That's just how things kind of. Uh, kind of um kind of evolve into so michael did did you get all of your um all your points out okay someone's trying to take over a window there i don't know if someone's trying to display something or what i i just pinned that link okay that webinar link and i think it it let me try and do that again oh brent's popping back in no 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 it's I'm hovering over her link that she put in, and you've got the facility to pin it. And I guess you can pin it on this on the window there, but obviously it didn't work. Okay, guys, we Sorry need about, about ten million dollars to develop our own lab type That's application. It. Okay, so the last one was Yammer. Yes, right? Yammer. Do you remember? Do you remember Yammer? Oh, yeah. Is that even available in any shape or form anymore right now? No. Oh, that's part of 365, it is. Okay. All of these products are rolled into 365, depending on what level of subscription you're going to pay mm -hmm. each month. But Yammer is, I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure. This is the difficulty now, because this is how these companies do not think these things are through, because you've got Skype and you've got Yammer, and you've got, you used to have Microsoft Messaging. But basically, Yammer has taken over all of the messaging kind of social network inside of an enterprise. And I remember when Yammer came out, it was like Slack, right? Yeah. That's, that's essentially, Yammer was the first Slack out there. Right. But it never took off. Well, it did take off. And then Microsoft saw, hold on a minute, we'll get it. But they just killed it, you know, because they just put it into enterprise and really didn't do anything with it as far as I could see. But I, I don't work in a corporate, so I don't really know yeah. for sure. But all I'm saying is that if we had Yammer, uh, that would replace the kind of LinkedIn messaging that exists today. So get rid of that because that's broken as well, in my view. And let's get a proper, let's call it Slack, Microsoft LinkedIn Slack version inside LinkedIn. That's where I would like it to sit, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it could be accessible through Microsoft or whatever. So that's my, my sixth one. And I've given them a bit more time on that. I'd say by the end of the year, they could do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Um, let's see, just had a comment from, uh, from, from Jez Johnson, where he says he read a Forbes article where they highlighted the fact that Microsoft also gets content it gets a content producer with LinkedIn. And that actually goes to something else that I've seen a couple of other people talk about when it comes to content and LinkedIn and how they've really fumbled the ball in terms of, um, you know, in terms of Pulse and really cutting down on, uh, on the exposure of Pulse articles and things like that. And I think that one thing that LinkedIn can turn around is, 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 is for it to start, you know, you know, just nuke whatever stupid algorithm that they have there now that's, you know, essentially quashing all, all of these brilliant post, um, post posts that are being published and, and, and you know, give, give people wider ex exposure because otherwise, you know, uh, content was mentioned. I, I even saw a couple of times in the financial press, but yet LinkedIn, I mean, that's another area where, where LinkedIn is fumbling the ball as, as well, I think. Don't, uh, and I think that you all would agree considering that you are, um, that, that you are content providers as well on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, they, I don't know if it's true, but LinkedIn have reported themselves that they are now the largest publisher on the web. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you take into account what's being published in groups, on pulse posts, uh, what's being influencers, and the news feed, and all of that. Now, I'm not so sure whether that's still true because of 
uh, groups have gone down significantly, I believe, in terms of activity. But yeah, so yeah, they, they've got a publisher, really, yeah. inside of their, their armory now as well. Uh, we just had William Lee Sefton hop in via audio only. It's showing poor internet signal for me, though. William, why don't you try or why don't you talk real quick and see if we can hear you? Nothing like dead air. Um, yeah. yeah, William, I don't think uh, I don't think that it's working. Um, yeah, uh, doesn't seem maybe, to me. Yeah, so. Um, not sure what to tell you. We'll leave that open for a minute or two. But actually, we're we're already at eleven fifty, and this is where we start to to wrap up things. So 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 if it doesn't work for you this week, William, maybe you can try again next week. But uh, but um, but yeah, Jez said you know quality original content that people actually want to read, which I think is being generated all of the time. And I mean, you know, LinkedIn definitely uh, yanked back on the reins a little bit because, you know, um, going back to my old, you know, this is why we can't have nice things comment that I always make when it comes to Pulse, basically. But, um, you know, some people did spam, some some people used it in, improperly and LinkedIn heard about it. And, and you know, the, the pendulum swung way the other way and they screwed things up, basically. So, so, so hopefully they are recognizing, you know, that, you know, people like us are are producing good quality content that 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 should be shared and should be out there. And um, if they really want to make content a, a significant play going forward, they really need to start opening that uh, algorithm or just you know clicking you know right click delete on that algorithm basically. It's similar to what Google had to do with all the spam websites. They just there was so much out there. Those marketers get so aggressive, they just blast away. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing. LinkedIn, there's just so much low quality content being posted just to promote their stuff. Right. With affiliate links in there. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's I think they should have had some terms or rules around that. And it's very difficult to police yes, with so is. many members and so many people writing on it. But I, I do agree it it has lowered the quality when people are just kind of creating an advert for free. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which, which actually LinkedIn doesn't want because they want people to use their advertising system. Yeah, to pay for it, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, if you start highlighting it, then they may clamp down on everybody. Uh, and even if you put, a, if, because it could get to the point that if you put a web address in or an email or a phone number or something, they'll go, yeah, you can't publish this. Right. Or you're going to get blacklisted because you're putting these. So... It's a very difficult thing to police, I think, to be able to get the right quality content. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and of course, no one has the time or the resources to be able to police content being published, to look at every single one and go, because that's that way, uh, Ted, you get the kind of policing adverts and the advertising system isn't working anyway. So how could they possibly keep up with the amount of stuff that's being published. Well, there. it's kind of like with the groups. The moderators are supposed to police the content and we do right. mm. promotions, yeah. but they don't have time. There's thousands of things being posted every day. Yeah. And they have jobs yeah. besides that, right. basically. Yeah, yeah a lot basically. of groups, I see there's like 500 to 1,000 articles a day posted. They're yeah. Most of them are self-promotional. Mm. Right. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I think at, at at this point we should probably go ahead and and wrap things up. But uh, but again, it's been another uh, it's been another great hour on uh, for Social Selling Wednesday. Just a reminder: we do this every Wednesday at eleven o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock Pacific, um, and. Uh, that's about all I've got. We definitely went a little far afield today, just uh, <laughs> just because of the merger or I'm um, you know the buyout acquisition merger, whatever you want to call it. It's you know this is likely going to happen unless something screwy happens. Uh, be, before we finalize, yeah, Bob, yeah, I, yeah let's do it. Uh, was it you or I think you shared an article in Slack yesterday? Mm -hmm. Uh, where there was some really negative comments from a, from an investor yeah. or a, yeah 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 I did I, I, I mean did it might that. be useful just to just kind yeah. of mention that just for the last few seconds let me let me bring that up real quick um, 
Yes. Yeah, so, so this is from the website Seeking Alpha, which is definitely more of an investor website. Um, this this concentrated probably more on the investor side more than anything else. But um, uh, uh, just the top points of the summary says Microsoft simply has too much cash to throw around, and in an effort to spend some, it bought LinkedIn. LinkedIn is horrifically overvalued. And the 50% premium, which I'm not sure where he gets that from, but the 50% premium only makes it worse. Um, there are no synergies with Microsoft products, which I don't necessarily agree with. And LinkedIn is a low quality business. I'm not so sure I agree with that either. And and, and he also says, I doubt Microsoft whether real, will ever realize a profit on this transaction, which this may be one of those transactions where Microsoft really isn't buying it to make a profit on it as much as to add elements that it well, doesn't have with its current business already, which, mm. which, which, which we've talked about as well. I mean, I mean, this guy, I mean, he, um, even, even in, um, seeking alpha, his, his, um, his handle or his company is called contrarian analysis. So he's obviously going to be looking at the um, deep negative stuff of, of, of most anything, but um, they bought a but, database of 440, 440 million business yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Companies. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I, oh, I, I was going to post that too. I don't know if you need to be a member of seeking alpha to actually uh, read this article, but their basic membership is free. That's what I have. And I can see this article. So, um, so, so if you have to give them, you know, just an email address or whatever, I definitely think that that is, um, oh, that's cool. So yeah, there it is right there. Um, there you go. There it is. Okay. So, so when, I don't know how, if you pick this up, Bob, through, during the investors call, but it was very clear when the chief financial officer talked about the acquisition. Mm -hmm. She made it very clear that it was an acquisition, not a merger. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That it was to leverage the growth of Microsoft mm -hmm. and to leverage the growth of LinkedIn. Right. And that it gives both companies the opportunity to grow those businesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas on their own, you know, so it's three six five. It will grow three six five for Microsoft, yeah. and it will grow all of, particularly, I think, Navigator yeah. and the recruiter, and the recruiter because recruiters, yeah. they can't. Uh, whenever Jeff Weiner talks, he always talks about the the word is, and I, I never heard it before until I heard him speak years ago when he goes at scale. You know, yeah. there's always this at scale. Mm -hmm. We, you know, in terms of that growth, and he was never going to do the at scale bit on it on LinkedIn on their own because their growth was slowing down, right? You know, and if you look at the the evolution of members over the last ten, whatever six years, it's always been the same. Every quarter, it's about 20 million, 30 million. It's only, you know, it's just very, very steady growth. It was good, but it wasn't significant enough. Mm -hmm. So and the other thing, um, I'm just trying to go back to that guy's comments. I I agree with him in terms of saying that no, no one's actually going to make a profit as such. But what they did see, there was $150 million worth of savings they felt they could right. yeah, each year. Yeah. Right? Which... That's pretty significant. I don't know whether that's in their engineering or where that would be, but that that's got to be a lot of people cost potentially too. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I would. I would. I would definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that. So on that note, I think we can safely wrap things up. It's uh, it, it's um, it, it's now right at an hour, maybe just a skosh above. So we will see you back here next week for Social Selling Wednesday. Um, we'll probably get a bit more into what we normally talk about in terms of uh, tips and tricks and changes that we've noticed within the LinkedIn platform itself, that type of thing. So join us next week, 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, and we will see you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye now.